I don't know what it was. He's walking upright like a man. Sightings in and around Vermont. Bigfoot sightings across New England have been reported. Red glowing eyes, about seven feet tall. Red eyes, big old fang claws coming out through, three inches long, you know, just sharp as they could be. There has been another UFO sighting flying over the Royal Botanic Gardens. There are 500 UFO sightings in the world every month. The truth is out there. <laughs> so this episode's w- late. Yes. Yeah. Do you want to talk about why the episode's late on the podcast? Oh, yeah. No, we can do that. Um, okay. Yeah, so the episode's late. We had to postpone it because we had a scheduling uh, thing come up. And that scheduling thing is, this guy got married. Yeah, you did. Yes. You did. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so that's now the, the angle of this podcast, I guess. There is, I mean, it can be. <laughs> I mean, it's not like... Pictures. Y'all well, check out my Instagram. Yeah, they, they are very yeah. nice pictures. Um, yeah. I mean, to be fair, it's not like... Uh, it'll be a married guy and a not married guy for too terribly long anyways. So <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. But, um, but yeah, yeah. So congratulations, Brandon. Why? Thank I've you. Already, I feel like I've already said that at least once before yes. this. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, no, it was good. We talked about it before, but just for listeners, and then I'll shut up about it because I'm sure nobody <laughs> that's not me is interested. But it was nice. I, there was I think uh, some pe- four pawns. We had everybody be nice, social uh, distanced apart, except for like other people who live together could stand close to each other. And yeah, mm-hmm. it was a, it was a good time. We had other people on the other side of the pond, like recording it. Um, they just happened to walk by and see it, and they were like, "Can we watch?" And then we yelled back, like, sure. <laughs> that sounds an awful lot like, like, when you say across the pond, it makes me think of, like, there were people in England watching you. No, no. Through, like, a weird, uh, a weird lensing effect because the, the, er- <laughs> the earth came back to normal because so many people have been indoors lately. Yeah, sort of like that one spot in Grand Central Station where you can yell into a pillar and someone's standing on the opposite wall. Well, you can whisper. You oh, can whisper that's right. You whisper. Pillar. And then you look at people doing that, and you're like, "What the fuck are you doing? It's just, it's not that. It's not that u- unique of a, of architecture. Yeah, like that exists in other places. Yeah, you just have to find a room that has that like parabolic shape. That's all. Yeah, it's pretty common actually. Yeah. <laughs> Although it's fun to just see someone do that. You caress their cheek and walk away without explaining anything. That'll teach them to turn their back to a group of people in New York City. Just saying. Which cheek? I mean, that's up to you. Yeah, I mean... Fifth cheek. Well, I mean, I, I personally wouldn't be doing it right now. Either cheek, to be fair. Yeah. I wouldn't do either cheek normally, but still... A booty right cheek? Now, huh? A booty cheek. A booty cheek? A booty cheek. No, you rub, what... you rub your cheek on their booty. Oh, that's horrifying. Yeah. That's pretty. That's pretty awful, actually. The imagery... I, I don't want to imagine that, mm-hmm. to be totally honest. But the, then you look at them like they did it to you, and you're like, yo, what the fuck? And then they'll just be very confused. Yeah, that would be very weird. Yeah. I, I couldn't do that. I, I, I'm i not that confident. I don't have the confidence to pull off that joke. Oh, I do not either. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. The um, I actually, that kind of makes me wonder what the, what, grand central looks like right now it's probably pretty dead it's probably pretty dead i'd hope it's pretty dead yeah because because i think uh what is it the bronx is like a nightmare zone right now but i'm not gonna get into it too too much anywho (laughs) (laughs) anyway Uh, social social distancing and isolation has been driving me crazy Mm mm-hmm um, but it's also, I'm somehow more afraid of when it's gone because I don't want to deal with people anymore. Uh, I, I will say it's been very good to my island in Animal Crossing. Oh, my island's pretty hopping. It's probably better than mine. I mean, uh, I, I, I was playing with somebody yesterday, like doing a little back and forth island visits and, and she clearly had a better island. Like things were organized, not just randomly placed everywhere. 
I don't have bridges yet, so I still have to use that pole. You don't have any bridges yet? No. Oh, Brandon, I'm a little bit I'm a little just, bit accelerated. I just put in the the shop and I just did the first expansion to my house. Wow. And okay, I'm I pretty think... sure that Easter Rabbit is a human. Oh, it it definitely is because he has a zipper. His name's literally Zipper. Yeah. Bunny T they Zipper nerfed... and then there's a big zipper on his back and he's creepy and he doesn't blink. Yeah, they nerfed um they nerfed the the eggs in the most recent update. So there's less of them now. Oh, did they? I mean, they were getting pretty annoying. Yeah, I have like three stacks of eggs. Like, yeah, this. this I, I was yeah, just trying it's... to harvest normal stuff, and I'd be like, "Oh, an egg!" Like it was pretty cool at first, and then it started to get in the way. So, who's your current favorite villager in your village? How many villagers do you have, first of all? Um, I'm not really sure. I've got raccoon guys that run the shop. Okay, Timmy and Tommy. Yep, I've got um like a fox looking guy. That wears a know, leather jacket, and I've got you, a kitty cat. Do you know any of their names? I do not. Brandon, you're such... You gotta be a better... You gotta, like, learn your neighbor's I names. I avoid them, because they... To, uh, to be honest, they all creep me out a little bit, and I think they're all perverts. So I avoid them all the time, except the owl guy and the 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 raccoon guys, because I have to, like, expand my museum and, and talk to those guys. But everyone else... I avoid those perverts unless they have a little balloon over their head. That means they're going to give me presents. Brandon, you're the exact people PETA warned us about. <laughs> PETA is actually really mad about Animal Crossing. Why? Because you give you give animals gifts. You, you interact with animals with the expectation that you're going to get something out of them. Which you are, the, you are literally that. I mean, a lot of people who play Animal Crossing... I like mean, I'm also that in villagers. real life. I... I... <laughs> Give my kids food with the expectation they're going to be all cuddly and like lick my nose later. <laughs> Brandon. Brandon, Pino would hate you. There, I mean, why else have an animal if like you're not using the animal to like get some sense of comfort or like sometimes scratch a tummy? Well, I mean, they would argue that you shouldn't have an animal. I, they the do place. argue that you shouldn't have an animal. So I, I think that that I think that argument is kind of void. Yeah. True. I mean, I mean, hey, listen. At least you're not keep. Have you watched? Have you watched any uh, anything from <laughs> Tiger King yet? No. Shut up. My dad was watching it yesterday. Actually, here's what. So we got home from from the ceremony, and then we're like hanging out, and and, and my dad starts texting Erica that he's watching Tiger King, or mm. that that show on Netflix. So she was just like. Brandon, I love that your dad's just texting me. He's so nice. And then she goes, he said he's watching something about tigers on Netflix. And I was like, oh, this guy. Because I was aware of that guy before Netflix. Yeah, I knew about him from last podcast on the left. Yeah, I knew about him from last podcast. A couple other podcasts talked about him. I think I saw yeah. a weird YouTube video once. He I, he definitely doesn't sing his own music. I just want to point no. that, put that out there. That is not his voice. Definitely in not. The, in the documentary, they have him singing to his own music. Mm -hmm. Totally different voice clearly a different voice oh. because the voice the voice his voice singing voice has his like twang to it yeah the yeah. voice that is doing the singing has no accent whatsoever <laughs> um just want to point that out that mm. that right there that's the real controversy of uh tiger king yeah uh not all the other stuff that's the controversy yes other Teach controversy it. I just yeah. realized that I don't have your friend code for some reason, which we'll take care of this after the show because my Switch is in the other room, so I can't even text it to you or anything right now. And um, that's weird because I just assumed that you're on my friends list. Be well, the reason you probably assume that is because I'm the person who pays for everyone in our friend gr groups. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Like, I just made that assumption that we were friends because I like that's how we use the internet. <laughs> I I am responsible for yours, your <coughs> sisters, um, Lissa's. Hang on, and two two of Lissa's friends and one additional person. <laughs> I am responsible for six people. I'm gonna text my sister because she's literally here the other day, um, so Did that we could be cl our switches could be near enough to like trade fruits. I thought I thought I I added her. I mean, you probably did, and she's might not be aware of it. 
So I'll I'll tell her. I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna look it up because I could have sworn I sent her that. I, I'm looking. I'm. This is this is the part of the podcast where you don't see or hear anything because John is typing up into uh, <laughs> it's his, his ni- my Nintendo account. <laughs> his my Nintendo account because he knows for a fact that he sent people stuff. That's not my <laughs> password. How's it's also the, not how's, my password. God the, damn it. The cat's been handling having their humans home all the time now. They probably hate it. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, I I don't know. Uh, Jiro seems okay. Dakota, Dakota exists. Jiro has become um a nightmare. He's so, always a nightmare. Like you had to put baby locks on all of your cabinets. Yes, that's true. Um, I also had to. So the most fun thing is he's now developed a taste for jumping on top of the bookshelves. Oh, which bookshelves? Uh, the ones next to my computer. Okay. So the problem with that is he tore at the wall, and now he tears out a hole in the wall every time he goes up there because he's realized <laughs> because he's realized that gets him attention. <laughs> so if we're not paying attention to him and playing like our switches on the couch, yeah. He will run up there. He will run up there. And f- <laughs> he'll go up there and just like tear at it until one of us gets up and deals with him. Do you think he's doing it because he realized the walls are hollow and he's trying to build a secret layer inside of your walls? He already has a secret layer, let's be real. That's true. Mine he does. Uh, mine I picture have like a weird like Breaking Bad style lab somewhere where they just like <laughs> we need to cook. They they're cooking up like crystallized catnip, like they're like they they smoke little tiny cat-sized cigarettes and they play with a butterfly knife trying to get their technique down just right. Uh butterfly knife. Yep, and they both have southern accents. Even though they're from New York. So, you had to send me uh, your sister's email address because yeah. I thought I sent an email to her, but I didn't. Oh, okay. It's uh, I'll, I'll send that to you. I don't know what off the yeah, top send of my to me head because it's her send cell phone later. number. This, but okay. this is not... Oh, yeah. This oh, yeah. Is, we're doing is, a show right now. We're doing a show. Oh, I, I, yeah, we just spent right? all this time because I yeah. had to look it up because I'm the admin slash parent or guardian of this friend group. Okay. And there are currently five members to it. Oh, <laughs> I'm going to tell my sister that you are the parent slash admin because you know we're both going to start calling you Daddy John. No. No. <laughs> oh, I'm so excited for done? this. I'm so excited for this. This is this is the thing that I didn't want in my life. All like ever. Future formal communication. You'll now just be daddy. Oh, <laughs> I feel gross. Oh, I have That's to gross. update your contact in my phone to Daddy John. No. Oh, I'm don't so excited do to do this. Don't do this. I'm Why so excited to do this. No. <laughs> because stop. it's gonna be so good. Oh, um also, welcome to Cryptopedia. <laughs> An exploration of the myths and legends that haunt the human mind, where each week we will take you on a journey exploring the mysteries of the world, tackling the tales of the paranormal, folklore, and the thing that definitely definitely lives under your bed. I'm Brandon. I'm I'm John. And my uh, native fruit is apples. I'm apples, too. Oh, okay. Yeah. My favorite villager, by the way, is Silvana. She's a little squirrel. Oh, I don't have her, and I, I did an... Um, an island visit, like a mystery island, and I bumped into uh, Pink Squid Girl. Oh, okay. Marina. Uh, I think they're technically an octopus. I don't know, but it's she's the only one where I, where I know, remember her name, and it's Marina. And that's only because, like, I invaded her territory instead of just, like, bumping into her. Oh, and I also got Drunk Seagull that shows up sometimes. Uh, that's Gulliver. That's Gulliver. And He's... I, I got um, Not Boo. Not Boo? Oh, uh, that's Wisp. Okay. You know what's wor- what's the worst part? Yeah. So, Lissa, uh, she likes Animal Crossing a lot more than me. Uh-huh. Um, I like Animal Crossing. Don't get me wrong. I think it's a fun game. It's a fun idle game. I like playing for like an hour or two a day. Yeah. Um, 
but I was playing this game where I was reading down a list of, of villagers and I had her tell me the personality types and she got like every single one of them right. Wait. And I was picking like random villagers. Yeah. Well, Timmy and Tommy, they're like those creepy twins from they're they they that's their personalities, just creepy Oh twins. there's I do want to point out there are literal personality types in Animal Crossing. Mm-hmm. There's cranky, there's peppy, there's sisterly, there's lazy, normal, snooty, I think smug. Uh and I think there might be one more, but I can't remember it off the top of my head. But there, there's like legit like puberty horny. Like that's the last one. That's what when you don't see a villager, but like you just hear weird noises. Like why is that tree shaking? Oh God. Uh, the name of this. So there's there's a uh, character. There is. Let me f- try to see if I can find them again. Um, their name is. Shit. This this is gonna pay off. Squ- Not at Squonky all. Squonky the chuzzle. Squonky the chuzzle. Yeah. Squonky the chuzzle. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, just in general, Brandon, have yeah. you met any koalas yet? No, I have no koalas that I'm aware of. <sighs> All right. So, before I know we got to start. I know we got to start. But take a look at that picture of a koala. Let us see. That's okay. That's not a koala. Number one, not a koala. No, it is. That's a koala. That, that looks like a human that just fell into a pot of boiling water. It really does, doesn't it? Yeah. Like a lot. I don't like any part. I don't like the mouth. I don't like the note. None of that's... And it's got freckles. Personality normal. That is not normal. Personality is... <laughs> personality is like... That's something that needs to be killed with a shovel. Oh, no. <laughs> that is not... That is not a nice animal. You know, this is probably this is probably someone out there's favorite villager. No, it probably is. And you're just ripping into ripping into her. Um, no, I mean like, no, no. Eugene's a pretty great quality. Who's that guy that ate people? Which? Uh, Which? I hate that. That's a question. Uh, Jeffrey Dahmer. Yeah, that this is. Alice is Dahmer's favorite uh, animal from Animal Crossing. Uh, to be fair, Dahmer is nowhere near Filipino or young man enough to be Dahmer's type. I mean, who knows? <laughs> uh, I just hate looking at this. Pe- I'm going to have nightmares. Thanks a lot, John. You're welcome. You're welcome. I've been having weird dreams, but not like scary ones. Oh, Brandon, I have been having... Insane dreams. I think it's the. I think. I think it's the social isolation. Yeah, I mean, I I think so too. Even though, yeah, but I'll just have a dream that like, I will have like, there was like a very minor earthquake, which could very well just be the train going by the house when I'm asleep, and um, I've also had a dream where like I've gotten just a very normal text message. Where I'll wake up, assume it, forget that it was a dream, open my phone, and go. Oh, that text's not there. That must have been in a dream. But nothing weird. Just, like, very normal, like, texts from people. There's like, hey, what's going on? <laughs> when I'm falling asleep, Brandon, I'll uh, I'll forget that I'm falling asleep. Okay. And, like, what will happen is I'll have these period. Like, I, I play a cell phone, a smartphone game. Yeah. And a lot of times you can, it has, like, an auto feature and you can interact with it and all that yeah. stuff. Um. I will literally have my eyes open. Yeah. And I'll blink and I'll my eye I'll be awake like five seconds later and I'll yeah. just be like Yep, I just fell asleep for a second there. Oh <laughs> <clears throat> You know what I have been doing lately is I've dreamt about doing household chores and then woken up and <laughs> I've been like, Fuck, I only dreamt that I did the dishes. I've been there. <laughs> I, I don't know if it's necessarily been household chores, but I've dreamt that I've done stuff, and it's just been like when I wake up, I'm like, you know, it wasn't even like it was magic. I like actually did all the steps. Yeah. <laughs> so now I have to do this again. Yeah, yeah. 
like like the all the, the full monotony in dream was there mm-hmm. so like you wake up and you're like ah i have to do this a second time but i already did it yeah so today's cryptid is similar in appearance to creatures within the herpicidae family herpicidae you yeah, which That's, is like uh, weasels and ferrets rep- and oh, shit like that weasels Okay. Wait. Continue. Do you know what one this is? Uh, continue. It roams continue. Great Britain. Uh, now I don't know. It was first See, seen in 1931. No. And it is I, I, no longer seen today. I was thinking of... So what I was thinking of mm-hmm. were the Japanese, like, sickle weasels. No. That sounds which cool. Which are really cool. They're really cool. I want to... I don't know if there's enough like meat on the on those bones for a full episode. That's still worth putting onto a list because we if we ever come like, short that we could do like okay, just it's on the yokai list. Another there's... episode of like things where we can't get a full episode. So here's a badge of five. Yokai yokai is a long is a is a long running list. I still have to read a book about a yokai where I'm fairly certain the author is sexually attracted to the yokai. Um, oh okay. So that's going to be fun. Uh, <laughs> but anywho, uh, I don't know. Uh, the, the 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 weasel of Cornwall. I, I don't no, know. No, that's not a bad guess, but it's, it's the Dolby spook. And I will move this into the folder where we can see stuff. But what I will say ahead of time is there there's a definite ramp of like, things about this getting weirder so don't read ahead okay so there's escalation this is gonna escalate is what you're yeah telling me. The, the whole thing is um escalation. an active escalation okay yeah. so it's it's basically it's basically uh it, it's like when a serial killer goes on their their once they get to the point where they're like you yeah know, killing like 30 <laughs> people in a day and it's just like yep i don't remember where i put that uh that crow hammer yeah that yeah crow yeah. hammer um, crow hammer. So I, I, I just what is put a crow it, hammer? Crow hammer? Do you mean like claw? Like the back of I, the hammer? No, the claw? no. I meant crowbar. But what does oh. a crow ha- what does a crow hammer look like? Uh, <laughs> I imagine a hammer, but it says really long. Um, so oh. I, I just moved it into the into the folder, and I'm gonna yeah, start off it. by saying that first, I'm a I'm a bad person because my primary source is legally dubious at best a reprint of Prince Lambert's original book from the 1930s with the authors appearing to have included just enough of their own commentary to legally change the original work by whatever amount lets you get away with this kind of shit. <laughs> um, such as talking about Facebook pages uh, dedicated to the subject matter. However, the original uh, was not available on Kindle, and this was. Uh, I think think also it's one of those weird things where it technically should be in public domain but because disney's at is is actually terrible it's not yeah well they had the law changed so they could keep mickey mouse yes that's literally it it's insane yeah uh there's no reason for that the the fact the fact that we can't have people make st- well the only thing that's good about it is we can't have people make star wars fan fiction like as legal movies I mean, yeah, that's true. That's that's the only thing. I do not want to see the Chewbacca uh, Han Solo ramp romances I outside do. of what we've already seen. I don't. I do. Oh, like a sultry, muscly Chewbacca. Well, Chewbacca's already a sultry, mu- muscly. Yeah, but like he get goes to like a barber shop and gets like a full body fade. Brandon, okay, I've been watching Venture Brothers again. Yeah. And that's exactly that. It reminds me exactly of the joke with Sasquatch in the first season. Oh, Do I don't remember with, that. No. So it's a parody of the Six Million Dollar Man. Yeah. Because for those of you who don't know, uh, and this is something amazing, Sasquatch made an appearance on the Six Million Dollar Man, and I think there was an action figure for him. Huh. Uh, but anywho, in the the the. Uh, but, but, but what's the word? Uh, Venture Brothers version of it. Yeah. Venture Brothers is a parody of all those cheesy, narmy, 60s, 70s style television shows, like spy yeah. films, Johnny Quest. Um, what was the other one? I, I don't remember. Um, Johnny Venture. No, nope, nope. Venture is 
Venture is literally the name of the family from the Venture Brothers. Yeah. Um, but anywho, it's a parody of all that like over the top ridiculous spy stuff. Mm-hmm. And uh, so they parodied the Six Million Dollar Man in that the Six Million Dollar Man had fallen in love with Sasquatch. Oh, okay. Uh, and Brock uh, was trying to get them out of the area, so he shaved Sasquatch. And it turns out Sasquatch was a dude, but he didn't know. Okay, I mean, I just Googled Venture Brothers shaved Sasquatch, so that's a fun thing to see. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> so. I think there is a toy, though. You think there's a toy? I think there's a toy of the sa- uh, of the Sasquatch? $6 million dollar man. Uh, no, $6 million dollar man. There is definitely a Sasquatch. There's a Kenner Sasquatch toy. And it's $500. Oh, dear Lord. Oh, my God. This is a... Oh, it turns out Sasquatch was a, a robot. Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. Um. Wow. Wow, this one's $100. Buy it. Yeah. Buy it. I should buy it. So, th- this whole thing starts on the Isle of Man, which is a small island located between Ireland and Great Britain at a small farm belonging to the Irving family located on the west side of the island. The family consisted... West side. West side. So the family side consisted of... of the Island of Man. Yeah, of James Irving, a traveling piano salesman, uh, and I imagine his back probably killed him. Okay, I just want to take a second. Yeah. Um, that there so was the a island... time? Yeah. Okay. So yeah, first of all, he's a traveling piano salesman. Didn't even that didn't even register in my brain, Brandon. Yeah. Can I just point that out? Because yeah. the thing that registered in my brain is I was looking up the Isle of Man because I'm an American, so my my geography skills are terrible. Yeah. Uh, just as a rule, um, so I was looking up the Isle of Man, and their flag, Brandon. Oh, I don't I don't know what their flag looks like. What's their flag? Their flag is three legs. In like a circle. Oh, I, I, what? Oh yeah, yeah. See and that's, that's how it. that's it's, that's their whole flag. Is that's just their whole three flag. Legs. And you know what? Yeah. Now it makes sense. That's how he's a a piano salesman, traveling piano salesman. He's not working alone. There's several <laughs> of them, and they all look like that. Yeah. And they've got like they've got like rods between them, and they're just like walking, carrying mm. it. They're basically a moving cart. Yeah. <laughs> I got you. All right. That's all it is. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, he was a traveling piano salesman. Um, uh, there's also Margaret Irving, his wife, and their daughter, I believe it, I, I'm going to guess, Voiry. Um, and the couple also had two older children, Elsie and Gilbert, but they didn't live on the farm. Um, and the farm itself was named uh Dor- Dorlish Cashin, which I guess is Gaelic for Cashin's Gap, or that's an area. So, yeah. Okay. Um. Gilbert. Yes. That is a name. Oh, is that a was that just that's a statement? It. You're just like Gilbert is a name. That's yeah. a name. Yeah, uh, that, but that's just the family. I'm... This whole thing it was it really the um the father and Voiry. Imagine. Brandon having being able to support a family being a traveling piano salesman because Brandon the Isle of Man is not that big no it's not that big and apparently it's, everyone's a pianist it's not that big it is 572 kilometers squared that's 221 square miles oh yeah that is not a very large area Mm -hmm. and not only that it's an island yeah so uh this man is supporting a family just being a piano salesman yeah like what is like like okay for reference brandon Mm -hmm. new york state is fifty four thousand square miles yeah (laughs) the isle of man is literally two orders of magnitude smaller than New York State. And this man can sustain being a a traveling piano salesman. 
my assumption is he is the only person selling pianos on the Isle of Man at this time. Like, <laughs> he is running a racket. Oh, yeah. He's the only guy. Everyone has a piano, and everyone keeps trying to, like, one-up their neighbor. Like, oh, look at this one. It's got an extra four keys. Like, I'm... <sighs> Wait. Why would you have an extra four keys? That would, like, totally ruin the whole point of a piano. It's supposed to be, like, standardized. It's an instrument, Brandon. Well, how else do you try to one-up your neighbor? Like, oh, I'll get more keys. I mean, I guess you would buy, like, a nicer material. Like, oh, this ivory? This ivory came from baby elephants. Okay, like, oh, this this ivory came from babies. Yeah, babies. I mean, that's that's usually how you do it, right? Just take... Take something already awful yeah. and then turn it baby form. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, baby teeth. So you collect all the baby teeth on the island and then you like... Oh, Brandon, this is nineteen. This is 1931. They still had baby teeth left over from the plague. That's a scary <laughs> thought. <laughs> oh, so they, uh, they, they lived a rather happy, scheduled life, different from their life in London with no electricity. Um... And a much different life beginning on their farm on Sunday, September thirteenth, nineteen thirty-one. So they were living. They were living in London with no electric. That seems weird. They moved from London to just okay. like so. So they like gave up city life. We're gonna have a farm, no electricity. Oh, okay. Let everything calm down. Okay, um, gotcha, gotcha. When J- James saw a creature uh, described as weasel-like, but unlike his furry cousins. This one, uh, Jim claimed, could meow like a cat and bark like a dog. Uh, even more than that, Jim found that if he made sounds of other animals, the creature would then mimic the sounds back. Hey, man, listen. That's a talented weasel. The, it's a very talented weasel. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, like, like that is the perfect pet yeah. right there. It's all the annoying things about animals wrapped into one. Yeah. So so my question for you is, what do you do when you find a mimic weasel and you want to get a hold of it? Do you set traps? Do you, like, put out food and try to trick it? Put something I'll under tell a you box? What I, I'll, I will tell you what I do. What, what do you do? I would go and I would get the Weird Al Yankovic song, Weasel Stomping Day. Oh, yeah? I would place it. In a CD player, as I do have the CD that has that song on it, mm-hmm. I would hit play on the song, and then I would just go weasel stomping, because that is an abomination unto nature. It is an abomination unto nature, <laughs> and the good news is you wouldn't actually have to go through all that effort, because the weasel will find you. The well, I'm going, to, <laughs> yeah. I'm going to be playing weasel stomping. Yeah. I'm inviting it to get stomped. Yeah. The, uh, the creature soon found its way into the family's homes. They would hear screeching and rustling between the walls, <laughs> and naturally they assumed that the house had taken on a rodent problem, uh, and Jim did try to set tra- uh, like trap the rats. However, they were unsuccessful. Apparently, out of boredom uh, and out of ideas, Jim thought he would just growl like a dog to scare the rats away, but much to his surprise, he heard something growl back at him, so that's how he knew... <laughs> This this mimic weasel was in the walls of his house. Man, it that is that is a dominance move by the mimic weasel. Yes, like that is a power play. Yes, uh, Jim, unable to rid himself of this thing, started to play games with it. He would make random animal sounds like birds and other animals, and the creature would make them back. Supposedly, it got to the point where Jim would say the name of an animal. And the creature would make the appropriate sound in return. So, Brandon, here's yes. the real question. If it's living in the walls, do you think it ever mimicked sex sounds? Oh, you know it. Dirty, you know dirty it. weasel. A but here's the problem. Because it's a mimic. So to only do it when they were trying to do it. And then that would just make things awkward. Like, it just kept ruining it. <laughs> that would be phenomenal. Yeah. I would I, I would pay money to see that movie. Yeah. <laughs> um. Then one day there were gurgling noises and cooing sounds like a baby or Danny DeVito after he drank too much of his own limoncello. I love the fact that he has limoncello. Yes. 
It's an official. Wait. Yeah. That is a visual pun that I'm seeing in that image. That man is holding a lemon. And a cello. And a cello. Yes. That is a visual pun. Yes. I love Danny DeVito. He's yes. a perfect human. He's amazing. He's my hero. Yes. So That's all. I just want to I want to yeah. appreciate him. Do fully appreciate the DeVito. Um, so James wrote that something was happening that made us speechless with amazement and apprehension. This strange animal, whatever it was, made Girdle sounds like a baby uh, trying to talk for the first time. And then something happened. The creature that the Irvings na- had named Jack began to talk. They have a talking mongoose. So now they have a talking mongoose. Oh, wait. There's more to this picture. Oh, yeah. Uh, delete the Isle oh. of Man. I lost it. I lost it. There we go. I fixed it. Oh, now I have to scroll back to the same. Oh, uh, no. Oh, oh no. Back. Yeah, it's right there. It's right there. There we go. Okay, I'm seeing it. Have you yeah. ever Have you ever seen a mongoose in the wild, by the way? I have not. I mean, I had it's... a mongoose bicycle. Okay, that's a different thing, but whatever. Um, Actually, I want to say... Uh, when I went to Hawaii as a kid, yes, uh, they had mon- mongoose everywhere, huh? And like, it's really, really cool. I don't think mongoose when I think Hawaii. Yeah, well, they've got mongoose in Hawaii, and they're like squirrels. The uh, the one time, uh, so when we went to Disney, uh, there were rabbits. Land? Yeah, uh, the Florida one. Okay, that's world. And um, so we went to Disney, and there were rabbits outside the hotel, and um, they didn't hop. They just walked uh, like a normal, like a cat or something like that. So it's like, oh, of course, in Florida, the the rabbits walk because it's Florida. Yeah, I mean, it's it's just Florida. Yeah. Right. So the the family's daughter, Voiry, would ask the creature to repeat nursery rhymes, and and apparently would repeat the rhymes in a high-pitched, very clear voice. And not too long after that... Jack, what they named the animal, informed the family that he preferred to be called Jeff, specifically spelled G-E-F. Oh, so he's like Jeff from Rooster Teeth. No, because Jeff is, a... he's G-E-O-F-F. Yeah, I know, the... but he's using a G, he's using oh, a G Oh, yeah, still. he's using a G. He's, he's using not a go F. Yeah. Yeah. Jeff go said... F yourself. Yeah. <laughs> Jeff said that he was born in Delhi, India in 1852. So at this point in time, he's a 79-year-old mongoose. Roughly four times the average lifespan uh, uh, or average age of a mongoose. Listen, he's doing a good job. He's doing well. He's doing very well. He's doing very well for himself. He is. Also, Uh, why wasn't he speaking English from the get-go if he was 79 years old? And from India. And from India. Also, why wasn't he speaking Indian? Hindi. Yeah. Hindi. Yeah. Why was he speaking Hindi or whatever? Because um, there is multiple. There are yeah, multiple. There, yeah. there are multiple ethno states within the confines of India and multiple yeah. languages and all that stuff. Let's assume he's speaking one of those that those Indian languages, one of those languages mm-hmm. that is popular and common in India. Yeah. Why is he not speaking that? Although, then again, it's also 1852, so England is England. Yeah. <laughs> Um, he, he also claimed he was transported to the island over 20 years ago uh, by a farmer who was importing mongoose to try to reduce the local rabbit population. Oh, okay. Yeah? I feel like that's just... I feel like that's the, the gorillas and the snakes thing from The Simpsons, where you just have to... You keep escalating, where you pull more and more animals in uh, until you end up at gorillas, and it's like, what are you going to do with these gorillas? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you teach him how to tap dance. Uh, Jeff apparently could always understand human speech, but it wasn't until Jim started to talk to him that he was able to uh, uh, be able to form the words himself. Oh, okay. So that they're just completely, they're just completely uh, sidestepping that whole thing. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. They, they're, yeah. Uh, they. So now having a magical talking mongoose, I'm sure, hit some pretty cool things. Uh, so here I would like to list some of my favorite Jeff the Talking Mongoose quotes. He, Jeff the Talking Mongoose has said, I'll split the atom. I am the fifth dimension. I am the eighth wonder of the world. So that's that's basically a Lemon Demon song right there. 
It's, <laughs> I'm actually. Are they? Did Lemon Demon like? Oh, did he quote reference this? Jeff? So we'll see. So here's some other good quotes. He said, "Um, I am a freak. I have hands and I have feet. And if you saw me, you'd faint. You'd be petrified, mummified, turned into stone or a pillar of salt." I thought he saw the the, the weasel though. He did see the weasel, and it looked like a normal weasel. So, so what we what we can arrive at from this is, it is. Wait, John! Oh my God! Oh, this is literally the Lemon Demon song. Wait! I I I thought this sounded a little familiar. The Eighth Wonder. It's it's a Lemon Demon song. <laughs> there is a song about <laughs> Jeff the Mongoose. <laughs> Brandon, the lyrics are extra clever, earthbound spirit, ghost in the form of a mongoose. Oh, no. And I have hands and I have feet. I'll never die. I am a freak. Yeah. Hello. I'm here living in the wall. I know that I might be small, but I am a freak. <laughs> oh. But I am the eighth wonder. There's an actual song about this. There is a song about Jeff the Mongoose. <laughs> I thought that sounded like that's such a weird. Okay, Eighth Wonder yeah. is such a weird thing to say. Weird specific thing, yeah. Weirdly specific. And I'm just like literally listening to this in the Lemon Demon song Eighth Wonder for whatever reason popped into my head while I'm listening to this. Yeah. Like listening to you talk. And that was just like. It was like the, the puzzle pieces came together. And I'm just like. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> oh. This is a bizarre story. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, but, yes, he should have been petrified, mummified, turned into a stone or a pillar of salt after seeing the weasel. Yeah. Oh, he also. Vessel. Said, um, if you knew what I knew, you would know a hell of a lot. He said, okay. I am not evil. I could be if I wanted. You don't know what danger or harm I could do if I were roused. A and then he said, I could kill you all, but I won't. Oh, um, he's so he's basically an edgy. He's an edgy teenager. Yeah. He said, if you're kind MySpace. to me, I will bring you good luck. If you are not kind, I shall kill all of your poultry. I can get them wherever you put them. That's uh, a very specific threat. That's a very specific threat. And then he also goes, well, Jim, how about some grubbo? What? <laughs> so, I'll, so he'll threaten you, say some crazy shit, and ask for food. The word began to circulate that perhaps Voyery was hoaxing everyone. A reporter for the reporter for the Manchester Daily Dispatch said that her that classmates said that she entertained them on the spot with imitations of animal noises. So how is this even a hoax? Like, it's not like they're showing anything. They're literally just saying, yeah, I got this crazy mongoose that lives in my walls. Yeah. That's like the farthest thing from a hoax. Yeah. They're, it's it, literally just you saying something. Yeah. Um, Kathleen Green, a friend of Voyery's, said in uh, a 2001 Radio Manx program called A Time to Remember that she had a talent for throwing her voice. Um, mm. But also that's that that's also from two thousand one. That's not a thing. She was old. Yeah. It was called a time to remember. So they, it was I think it was like old people talking about things from the day. Uh, okay. Yeah. I, I mean you really can't throw your voice No. Really. It's just not how it works. Although Scooby Shaggy from Scooby Doo could. Yeah, that's a he that's a Scooby Doo could. thing. He legitimately could though. Because he's shaggy. Oh yeah, no, he could legitimately do it. Like, like real. I watched. Mm -hmm. I watched the show. I watched the documentaries. Yeah, it was weird that they were animated, but they were documentaries. Yeah. Oh, uh, my beard has knots in it. Oof. Uh, from the beginning, after word had spread, investigators um posited that Jeff may actually be some odd form of poltergeist. Why? Um, <laughs> like, Brandon, why? Okay, I, I just want to, I legitimately don't operate in a brain space mm -hmm. where I can look at this and say, you know what? That might be a poltergeist. No. Because to me, it's like, 
you know what? That guy might be a lying sack of shit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, this is, like, definitely not that far off from, like, if I'm out at a bar and just having, like, a normal dinner. Well, not a dinner, like a lunch. At least you get salad yeah. and, and steak. And there would be the odd guy that was way too drunk for it, mm-hmm. it to be, like, four o'clock. Mm-hmm. And just, like, saying crazy. Like, I... Like, I, I one time, I might have said this on the podcast, I, I know, I told someone else, I was trying to enjoy my salad and steak, and some guy tried to show me how he would fight a gorilla. Like, he had, like, a technique, and he got to the point where he got out of his chair, and he was, like, doing these poses, and he's like, okay, well, and he said, all right, well, you stand, like, like this way, and, then, like, he showed me his actual gorilla fighting technique. Um, I want to point out that he's probably never fought a gorilla. No, no. He um, was in the city of Kingston. Yeah, so he's probably never fought a gorilla. No. Um, I would pay money to see him fight the gorilla. But then I would also have to pay money for therapy because I just watched a man die. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so Jeff could produce sounds uh, like raps and knocks all over the house almost simultaneously. Toe bones. He would also throw things through the cracks in the wall uh, paneling. Outside of these... Uh, <laughs> I said the like these are all things that any trickster could do. Jeff could also turn it invisible and travel all over the island. Something that I dare anyone to disprove. Checks out. Literally, checks out. Literally checks out. There is literally no way to disprove that. Yeah. There's also no way to prove it. No. But there's no way <laughs> to pro- disprove that there is an invisible mongoose that's not there right now because he's traveling. It's the invisible mongoose we have in our hearts, Brandon. Yeah. Not the one that lives in our walls. It's the one in all of our hearts, in the heart of a child, as they're making up stories about the invisible mongoose that lives in their wall. Yeah. (sighs) It's the feeling of wonder you get Mm -hmm. from the invisible (laughs) mongoose, who has kind of threatened to kill you. Yeah. A little bit. Just a, just, A just a little bit. And throws off some crazy, crazy shit. I am the eighth wonder of the world. I, I will split the atom. I am the eighth wonder of the world. That is my favorite thing. <laughs> yeah. I want to be, if I ever met a human who said, I am the eighth wonder. I'd want to hear them out a little bit, but then I'd probably call the cops. Yeah. I mean, if you want to hear that, just wander around Kingston. There's a lot of people that wander around saying crazy shit. That's fair. Just like to to like themselves, just wandering around, saying just outrageous stuff. I so, had somebody we'll have a conversation with them. I had somebody who believed that if they move the election t- to twenty twenty five, that all of the pandemic stuff would disappear instantly. Huh? Because it's it's an election year, and it's all this bad stuff because it's an election year, not because it's a global pandemic. Yeah, that happened to me in the outlet store. <laughs> when I was looking for toilet paper. Yeah. There's still, I mean, we're good on toilet paper here right now, but. Um, I had to. It's Brandon, still crazy everywhere. Like, just never there. I brought, I bought the crappiest toilet paper because that was the only option. The only option when it was at Hannaford was the Cottonelle two packs. Was it Cottonelle? Because I even saw some pictures on it. No. On, no? No. The, the toilet paper I got is the no brand kind. The kind that they put in, like, dollar stores, bathrooms, or, oh, like, because yeah. I basically bought it from a dollar store, because yeah. it's the only place that had toilet paper anymore. Yeah, no one's got toilet paper anymore, and so when I went to, to the Hannaford, and I just looked, they only had the two packs of Cottonelle, and then I saw a picture online of, like, sh- everything showing how hard it is to find toilet paper now, and everywhere that had toilet paper was only Cottonelle, so I, I think Cottonelle... W- is it uh, statistically? I, I I think I've discovered that Cottonelle is nationwide the least favorite toilet paper. Because that's I all that I see. If it's if you know there's what I ever get? any, you know what I get? I get Scotts. If I can, you know, I do. I get Scotts. I like Scotts. Uh, not a sponsor. Not a sponsor. But if I'm gonna have to wipe my butt, I'm wiping it with Scotts. Yeah. Which you know usually that's an insult. But in no. toilet paper, it's the highest praise. Yes. <laughs> Scots. Because it stays together better. It doesn't, like, 
do the little like pillies on. So I love this picture that is coming up. Oh yes, it's a very good picture. It's a it's a picture of a, a cartoon mongoose with some Jeff quotes. I I I I want a button with Jeff the talking mongoose on it. Oh, and you just hit the button and it says, "I mean, oh that's my god, within your power to make." Brandon. Yeah. You know, if we if we ever had enough, so I've wanted to make a, a pins for the podcast for a while. Oh, you want Jeff the mongoose pins? If we ever make pins for this podcast, if we ever get enough listenership for that, because I think we're at 200 a, an episode now. If we ever get enough listenership to warrant us by making pins, we are we are going to get someone to draw a Jeff the Mongoose piece of artwork for us. Oh, yeah, and make and we pins? Are, we are going to make Jeff the Mongoose pins. That is going to happen. If yes. The, if, if we if we ever get the ability to do that, that is the first pin I want to make. <laughs> <laughs> Just so I can have it. Agreed. I don't care. I don't care about our listeners getting it. I want them <laughs> to get it, but the fact of the matter is, this is a pin for John. Yeah. For my pin collection. <laughs> I have one, by the way. I, I keep started it on it. my backpack. I keep it I keep mine in a little like I bought like one of those like uh frames mm-hmm. that has like a uh like a foam board behind it and like yeah. black pla- black uh black fabric mm-hmm. and I just have them all pinned up there. So I've got like a bunch of botcon pins because nice. that's 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 the most pins I have is botcon yeah. pins. Then I have some twerp pins, proto man pins, proto men pins and uh I got uh some uh, Pokemon gym badges. Oh, nice. So, you know. Yeah. Using his powers of invisibility, Jeff would travel all over the island and then repeat conversations he had overheard. Jeff also had an, uh, an apparently incredible library of swear words that Amazing. he liked to use and sing songs uh, that the family did not know. Uh, Jim even thought that Jeff may be more of an ec- more than an extra special mongoose, which I don't... I- Okay. Yeah. Uh, that That's weird, but I do want to say this. Yes? I wonder how creative those swear words were. It They didn't say list them, but it sounded like it was an impressive library. And there were probably those really cool, like, old-timey swear words. Yeah. Like, I'm sure they had things like... Uh, Oh man, I can't even I can't even swear old style because it's just too creative and I am not oh, yeah. that creative a person. There's you have a boot nani on your heel. And you're like, mm-hmm. what? This weird shit you like bunion that. Bunion head? Yeah. Uh, Actually a really bad insult in uh Edinburgh. Is what? It's not. Oh okay. uh, bu- bunion head, bunion head. Oh, bunion head, okay. Yeah, yeah. I, don't look that up. I'm telling you that, that is that okay. is a common curse. Okay? Yeah. Just so you know. Okay. I'll have to use that in, co- in normal conversation now. Especially with people from Edinburgh. They'll understand. Yes. Okay. Actually, they might punch you. Yeah. <laughs> so, so maybe don't. Maybe don't. Yeah. Um, oh, did I also mention that Jif uh, was a, a shapeshifter? Jif. 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 Um, and at least two letters to Captain James McDonald. Um, and Captain James. Oh, sorry. To Captain James McDonald, which was Captain James Dennis's pseudonym. What? Wait. Okay. What? <laughs> yeah. Why would you make your pseudonym if you're have a the captain? same first name? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like. Yeah. You could. You could at least, you know, use a different first name. Yeah. It's like, hmm. I think this might be Captain James. Yeah, th- it's very much like a Superman taking his glasses off kind of fake name. It, it super is. It's like the laziest fake name ever. Yeah. Uh, so Jim wrote of an odd incident. Early 1932, my daughter and I were alone in the house, broad daylight, and I had a chance to look through the window of the room we were in, and they saw, to my surprise, a very large cat, striped like a tiger. We ourselves did not possess a cat, uh, and I called Voiry to come look out the window at it. She See, gets... I knew it. I knew it. You knew it? I was it? mentioning this before the episode. It's James... Ex- it, it's his actual name? James Exotic. Oh, yes. Yeah, he's he's breeding tigers in that house. He's breeding tigers. Topical. 
Uh, she did so and remarked upon the size of the cat, but especially more uh, the unusually large bulldog head it had. The cat then walked away from the door of the, the outbuilding where it was standing 40 to 50 feet away from us. Then I saw it was a Manx tailless cat. Um, and, oh, what? I was then a little more surprised as the pure Manx cat is usually smaller than the English. Um, I thought that this was no ordinary cat. I slipped a cartridge into my single barrel gun and took after him. Personally... Uh, I'm- I'm so glad, I'm so glad that Great Britain has people who do this too. Yeah. It, it makes me feel less awful about being an American. Yeah. Uh, personally, I'm very fond of cats and did not look... <laughs> and do not kill for killing's sake. The cat was a little ahead of me, but easily within range. And it turned through an open gate and went into a grassy field. I was there uh, a few seconds behind it and fully expected to see the cat, but no cat could be seen. Um, look as I tried, uh, the field was level and there was not a bush or any roughness where the cat could even be hidden and the hedges were all, uh, earth or sod hedges as, uh, they are called here. I detailed my experience to my wife on her return, uh, that night when Jeff called out, it was me you saw, Jim. Further, uh, explanation is beyond me. So, you know that his wife, you know for a fact that his wife, when he's he's writing this out, she's like reading over his shoulder, and she's like, "You haven't, you haven't, you haven't mowed the field. You haven't, mowed, you haven't mowed the field in like a month, like at all. It's so overgrown. Go and do the field. Yeah, she, Stop writing." She's like, "Jim, there's shit." <laughs> and you know what? I bet it's Voyery, his daughter, this whole time. Like he is just like, I just saw this crazy cat, and she's in the other room, like. It was me, you saw Jim. And he's like, it's Jeff again. <laughs> and the wife is like, listen, I get that you're playing along with her, but this is like really not good for her development. <laughs> yeah, like, I know this Jim, is 19... seriously fucking with her. It's really messing with her. It's really giving her a complex. I know this is 1932 and we don't know this stuff yet. Yeah. But like, even I am seeing this as a problem. <laughs> yeah. Uh, News continued to spread and reporters and paranormal investigators would regularly visit the house. In 1932, psychic researcher Harry Prince sent his friend, the aforementioned Captain James MacDonald, to Dorlish Cashin to see if the stories were true or not. Uh, Captain MacDonald visited the Irvings three times between 1932 and 1935, and Captain MacDonald never saw Jeff but heard him speak on a number of occasions and also witnessed items such as bottles and china trays being thrown without any visible source. Um, Okay. Prince, uh, sorry, Price, along with Richard Stanton Lambert, uh, the founding editor of The Listener and an employee of the BBC and CBC, journeyed to Dorlish Cashin in July 1935, but Jeff had told the Irvings beforehand that he thought Price was a doubter and would refuse to allow himself to be seen or heard. Okay, that's that's not the biggest red flag in the history of red flags. Yeah. Whatsoever. That is not the most, like... <laughs> oh, everything to this point seems like it's all bullshit, and I don't know why they have so many people visiting the house. Like, there's no reason. There's nothing. nothing that has been said so far would make me go, you know what? Maybe they're not lying sacks of shit over there. Actually, no, I would want to go visit to see, hear what crazy shit would come out of the mouth. <laughs> like, oh, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's true. Just, I want to hear the, the curses. Yeah, I want to hear the curses. I want to know. It's like, yeah. I want to know all the curses. Tell Listen, me the curses. I'm, I need to learn these. I need to get the hot, hot goss on the latest curses. Yeah. Uh, and true enough, Jeff did not appear or make any sounds for them, stating, I like Captain Dennis, but not Harry Price. He's the man who puts the kibosh on the spirits. What? So, I don't know. What does kibosh even really mean? That's one of those, I think that's Yiddish, right? I don't know, it's one of those words people say and you never think about it. Yeah. I'm gonna look it up, you keep going. Okay. Nandor Fodor... Uh, was one of the leading authorities on poltergeists uh, and hauntings in the paranormal phenomena. Uh, at one time, he was an associate of Sigmund Freud and wrote on subjects like uh, prenatal development and dream interpretation. However, Fodor is credited mostly for his book 
uh, the encyclopedia. Ex- I'm having such a hard time talking. It's like encyclopedia. Encyclopedia of Psychic Science. Thank you. Uh, (laughs) First published in 1934, and in 1937, Photo, her researched, was the research officer for the International Institute for Psychological Research, traveled to the island of man. Sorry, Isle of Man. I I do want to point out, it is psychical research. Psychological research is legitimate. Oh, gotcha. (laughs) Psychical research is... Is what uh, he had a lot uh, of made up credentials. Yeah, that's that's Egon uh, Egon Ray and Venkman's research in Ghostbusters. Oh, is it really? Oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> uh, that's. Good. I'm so excited for the new Ghostbusters movie. Oh, it should be good. When's oh, it coming so out? Uh, who knows? Ah, uh, true. Uh, uh, he stayed at the Irving's house for a week and by the time uh, Fodor got involved with the mystery Jeff had I lost my spot had been around for at least five years Mr. Irving had written to Fodor saying that it was unlikely he would get a chance to converse with Jeff who has now become more surly but Fodor made a trip anyway and uh, was (laughs) How, and, wait, wait. How did how does Jeff become more surly after? I don't know. Because he literally says, "I could kill you all, but I won't." Yeah. That is a direct quote, Brandon. Yeah. How do you get more surly than "I could kill you all, but I won't"? And I am the eighth wonder of the world. Yeah, I don't know. Um, yeah, but again, as his reputation, uh, Jeff. Refused to talk or make his presence known. One night while at the farmhouse, Fodor had rocks thrown at him. Uh, the yeah. other time, the kitchen door banged twice, which the Irvings attributed to Jeff. Uh, Jim Irving told Fodor that in 20 years, that particular door had never banged from the wind. Despite not having much to go on, Fodor saw the case as a true mystery. What? Since all the possibilities are against it, but all the evidence is for it. What? That- uh, I don't know. I, the, I hear, I heard. So I was listening. I didn't hear any real evidence there. No, whatsoever. It's, the door slammed, and this guy said it doesn't usually do that. So it's and gotta be rocks at uh, him. poltergeist. Yeah. Rocks. Um, after his visit, Fodor wrote a letter. Wrote Jeff a letter expressing his disappointment that Jeff refused to greet his guest saying dear jeff i am very disappointed that you did not speak to me during the whole week which i spent there i came from a very long away uh and took a lot of trouble in collecting all your clever sayings um i believe you to be a very good and generous mongoose i brought you chocolates and biscuits and ev- i even would have been happy if you had done something for me also by biscuits he means cookies yes yes because yep. he's british Yes. <clears throat> Fodor concluded that I cannot prove he is an animal. I have not seen him. He did not talk to me. Uh, he claimed to be an animal. I cannot disprove that claim. And But but, but not disproving the claim doesn't mean that it's yeah, real. He can't disprove the claim of this thing that he didn't hear. Yes, because you can't, you can't disprove a negative. Yeah. Like, it's like, it's like the whole, like, you can't prove that God isn't real because that's literally not how science works. No, you prove that something exists. That's that's how it works because it's yeah. an infinite. It's an infinite universe. John, <laughs> so I don't know if you know this, but Scully, my white and gray cat, she yeah. told me that she's actually the ninth wonder of the world, and she'll split the quark. Now you can't disprove that that never happened. Well, what if I told you that? Uh, that Jiro has already split the Higgs boson. He's calling himself the 42nd wonder of the world. Oh, damn, he jumped, Jiro. He, jumped, he Yo. jumped the line. He jumped the line. He did to four, of course, 42. Of course he went to 42. Uh, that's crazy. We should definitely contact the news. Mm-hmm. And also, yeah. You know, I wish it was, I wish it was easier. Like, I was talking to a professor recently. Yeah. about like how it gets harder every year to get a doctorate mm-hmm. because ultimately the problem is there's more knowledge in the world you know yeah and like 
it's harder to push out that bubble. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, these guys were so lazy with their their hoax. I'm I'm calling I'm I'm calling it. It's probably a hoax. There's no actually. It's not even a hoax. There's story. Yeah. Um, like they could have done so much more. I would have at least gotten a puppet involved. Oh, that would have been great. Or get some like taxidermy shit done. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would at least have a puppet. That's yeah. all I'm gonna say. Uh, Fodor speculated that Jeff was a poltergeist, poltergeist centered on voyery. However, years later, he changed his mind and suggested a complex psychological theory to explain Jeff as a split-off part of Jim Irving's personality in order to fill his time. So it went from poltergeist to he had a personality split because he got too bored because he used to be in the city. Um, I Okay, that's, that's a huge leap, first of all. More likely, I would say, he was bored, so he made something up. Not yeah. his personality split. Yeah. Uh, and the years after, Jim eventually passed away, and Voyery moved to England to become a machinist, and Jeff slowly went away. No one knows what happened to him. Uh, he was last seen in 1939. I bet I know it, ha- it happened to him. Voyery is full of shit. Her dad was full of shit. The dad died, and she turned into an adult. Yep. <laughs> like... I'm an adult now. I don't have time to be joking about Jeff. Yeah. Uh, then in 1947, a retired army lieutenant who bought Dorlish cash and was putting away his motorcycle. And one night he was startled by an animal with gleaming eyes. It had a weasel-like appearance, but it was bigger than a weasel, more like a skunk. Uh, Graham set a snare for it and in the morning uh, found it. Uh, trapped and ferocious. It snarled, spat, and clawed more venice- venomously more than anything he'd ever seen. Graham clubbed it to death with a stick. The corpse was three feet long with a black and yellow mottled fur. Rest in pieces, Jeff. Rest in pieces, Jeff. The uh... bullshit made-up mongoose that, if was real, was beat to death with a stick. I hope. I the hope eighth wonder was... of the world was beat to death with a stick. I kind of hope that if it was real, that is the, the the best possible ending to this story. Yeah. Like, if that was what it was, that is clearly the, the most ridiculous. That's, there was, like, the slightest amount more of the story, but I was like, nope, beaten to death with a stick is where we're going to end it, because that's the perfect ending. <laughs> Quite frankly, it's how I want to go. Yeah. I mean... The, I mean... <laughs> Because I love the idea that the eighth wonder of the world was beaten to death with a stick. And then, like, later on they concluded that it wasn't Jeff. Which, one... What? Huh? Yeah. I mean, he decided it wasn't Jeff because... But... I mean, I also conclude it wasn't Jeff because Jeff yeah. never existed. Yeah, but... Jeff, Jeff never existed. Yeah. So... Huh. <laughs> oh. Huh. Perfect ending. You just go, huh. Huh. It's like hearing that uh, JFK was killed by a uh, um, a Secret Service member who was just being an idiot, who stood up with an AR-15, took off the safety, the car lurched, and he accidentally pulled the trigger. Huh. Huh? Did you not listen to the most recent uh, last podcast on the left? No, because they are no longer on Podcast Addict. They're on Spotify, though. They are, but only on Spotify. And I'm against single, like... But they just did a JFK assassination section. I'll have to find it. Really, it was me being lazy and not wanting to track podcasts on two separate applications. Fair enough. I'm not a conspiracy theorist, but I kind of now think that that's what happened. And that that's of the main of the theories that I have heard, that one is not crazy. No, it's not, because it's literally the most it's the dumbest thing. And as an American, if there's one thing that I know we can do well, it's be ridiculously stupid. With gu- yeah. With guns. Yeah. With guns. There's lots of videos of people shooting themselves by accident. Yep. 
So, <laughs> although I'm not going to like, because honestly, it doesn't really matter at this point. Who killed, how JFK died doesn't really matter. The damage is done. Yeah. <laughs> there's no, there's no putting that particular spirit back in Pandora's box. Mm -hmm. So, um, but yeah. So Lemon Demon song. Yes. Lemon Demon song. Now I understand that song. Now you have the context for this song with some crazy shit that was said. Not going to lie. I yeah. actually really love that song and I never knew what it was about. I'm listening to it right now. It's pretty good. It's a good source of Jeff quotes. I like Lemon Demon though. So, I mean, most people, it's probably not everyone's thing. I like Lemon Demon. No, they're good. I like them. They're not like the kind of music they like go to like frequently to just listen to. But if I just heard it, I wouldn't like change the radio station. I can't believe that it's literally, it's literally quotes from Jeff. Yeah, all the lyrics are literally Jeff quotes. Yes. <laughs> They're all Jeff quotes. I'm listening to it. I just. Yeah. I love this. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. I'm. <laughs> I. This. And the music video has a mongoose fighting a snake in it. Like a taxidermied mongoose fighting a snake. Uh... Oh my gosh. Yeah. I didn't I I thought the lyrics were weird. I just liked it because of the eighth wonder bit. Yeah, and you just thought they were like like how bands will just have like weird lyrics and shit sometimes. Or yeah, yeah, like like one of my favorite bands is literally they might be giants. Yeah. Have you listened to the lyrics of Birdhouse in Your Soul? No. <laughs> yeah, the he just said I was born in India. Yep. Yeah, the, it's all Jeff stuff. It's literally Jeff. It's literally Jeff. And I am so happy to know that now. Yeah. Uh, I'll post a link to the Lemon Demon YouTube channel. Okay. Or, oh, wait. This isn't Lemon Demon. I'll post a link to the Spotify link for Lemon Demon. So that way. People can listen to will, it once, once. Yeah. They can listen to it legally as well. And Lemon Demon gets the the money. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But yeah, and you'll get to hear some additional quotes from Jeff that we some I didn't include because because I put a lot in there. And I didn't want it to turn into like Brandon Reed's quotes. Uh, to be fair, though, all of the quotes are great. Oh yes, literally every Jeff quote is phenomenal. Yeah, Jeff is Jeff is basically is basically a no sleep story. Yeah, <laughs> like it's a prototypical no sleep. Like, let's be real. Mm -hmm. That is what Jeff is. It's a no sleep that got big enough where the, there's like newspaper clippings of like articles and. Uh, oh, and Voyery well, never admitted if she was making it up or not uh, prior to her death. No? No. I don't think I need Did her for that. Did she talk about it though? Did she didn't she really talk, talk about, about it? it much. No. Yeah, that's, but that's probably the case because she probably didn't want to talk about it because it was like, I was a kid. Yeah. That's probably what she th her whole reaction on that is is like, I was a child. Why are you asking me about this? I have to go do some machining work. Yeah, <laughs> I am a machinist now. Yeah, I'm no longer the child who believed in the eighth wonder of the world. <laughs> She's like, wait, you, a grown adult, are asking me about that when I was a a a, a little kid. Like what? The the oh what what is it um. It's like a, it's like Narnia, right? Um, oh yeah. Once you, you stop believing, you get hit by a train, you don't get to go. Yeah. You know that's the ending of Narnia, right? No, I was wondering what why what's going on with the hit by a train that happened. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. So at the end of the the Narnia books, um, yeah. the kids get hit by a train. I don't. I read them. I don't remember that. Yeah, they super do. They that's super crazy. do. Um, hit by a train. Narnia. Like, uh, yeah, the train wreck. Let's huh. see, let's see. Uh, 
uh, all the children who visited Narnia are s- and still believe in it died in this wreck, therefore excluding what? Susan. Everyone who believed in Narnia was murdered in one train wreck. What? Yes, that is how. That is how Narnia, the Chronicles of Narnia, ended. So spoilers, but really not. It's a little bit past the point. Uh, including, including an old man who was one of the first people to be in Narnia. Huh. Yes. I like that. That's still a very, a very Jeff. I. We need more more books where it's like, and everyone died. The end. Except for Susan. She lived. With uh, the horrifying reality that... How many how many kids were in uh, the Chronicles of Narnia? Five? Oh. I want to say. Wait, John. I just have a, I have a new uh, a Narnia theory. It, it's really... Okay. Um, if it was the movie Identity, where Identity is a movie where all these people get mur- are staying in a hotel and they'll get murdered in these crazy ways. And then mm-hmm. what you learn is that it was a guy that had like 12 personalities and each person in the movie was one of his personalities. Mm-hmm. And the workers gave him medicine and eventually his personalities like die off until there's only one left. So maybe all of Narnia was her in a fantasy world and then everyone in there was also part of her fantasy. But once he received... Uh, proper medical treatment, this fantasy world and everyone in it went away. Nah, her family just died. <laughs> Better. Uh, <clears throat> anywho. <laughs> so if you enjoyed the podcast, our website is CryptopediaCast.com. Our Instagram is at CryptopediaCast. Our Twitter is also at CryptopediaCast. If you want to get in touch with us and ask us any questions about the show or give us ideas, be sure to email us at cryptopediacast at gmail.com or us at cryptopediacast.com. You may also DM us, and we'll give you our DM information in a second. Uh, we have a Patreon, which I haven't checked yet. Because I was talking about Narnia and how her family's dead. She's dead. Yeah. Do we get email updates when we get additional uh, doopity doops on do. the boopity boops? Yeah, we I don't do, we do. think we got any more because I didn't get any like notifications on my phone. No, I, I like to check just to be sure, though. Okay. Uh, cause for all I know, we could have gone to doop to doop while we're doing the, episode. Oh, that's true. Uh, so we have three jackalopes. I think I did last week. So Brandon, you go this time. All right. We would like to thank officially Clay Sinclair, who's been around since the very beginning. He's been there so early. I forget what episode, but we're even, uh, in... he's, he's over a year at this point. I think. Yeah. Like he, he's been around for a while. Marty Von Party again. Also great. very long. I hope uh, around for a long time. Hope that's his real name because I like that. Like, if you have the if your name has Von Party in it and you go to college, your life is gonna be fucking nuts. Like, that's all I have to say. It's gotta be. Oh, yeah, no. Like, there's no way he doesn't know how to do a keg stand. Um, and then Bird Schneider, who newer but also great guy, hollow bones. Um, Mm -hmm. we're really the money from the Patreon, we're trying to get. We should really start a GoFundMe so we could get his bones filled in. Um, yeah, because that's probably it's becoming fair. a pr- he can't hold on to a balloon. Do you know how sad that is? He I mean, can never he have can hold- the joy of holding a balloon. Well, he can hold on to balloons that aren't filled with he- filled with helium. Oh, we'll give him heavy balloons with that other gas that makes your voice get deeper. Uh, what? Huh? Yeah, there's another gas that because it's heavier than air. Where, like, if you suck it in, it makes your voice get, like, real deep. Burr, burr. And you can also fit, is, put, you put it in a fish tank and it can float, like, little, like. I think it will kill you, though. I mean, all of that can kill you because you're filling your, your lungs with something that's not air. Yeah, I mean. Sulfur hexafluoride. Hey, Brandon. Yeah? You want sulfur it, hexafluoride. Let, let's go get some sulfur hexafluoride. I don't think I want. I, I don't think I want that. And we're going to Sul- fill balloons with sulfur hexafluoride, ship it over to Marty Van Party, and then it can hold a balloon but not float away. Brandon, that's a... Uh... Sulfur hexafluoride will kill you. Absolutely kill you. If you mess up with it. Um, I mean, so will helium. Yeah, it will. But at the very least, helium will float away. Sulfur hexafluoride will just stay there. 
Oh yeah, if you pass out, you have to have someone like hold you, you by your die. ankles so you that die. it can come out. You have to like. Uh, it's a good point. Yeah, it will kill you. It will kill you dead. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it will you... kill you dead. <laughs> when people die, they're dead. Anyway. I don't know. It, 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 what if you have um, whatever the weekend at Bernie's guy had? He he had two man children puppeteering him. Yeah, but didn't they do the thing where like they put something on him, and then if he heard music, his body would get up and dance? No, they were the- just like. But but they were just messing with him. I'm they were thinking like, the, like I'm thinking at uh, you know, I, I think that's weekend at Bernie's two. Weekend at Bernie's one, they puppet him, and the second one, I think they go to like wait L- Louisiana and like have a ritual performed on him, and they like get chicken bones and go into a bathroom, and then every time the body hears the music, it dances. Whoa, whoa, what? <laughs> so I'm I'm reading. Oh, that's not a joke, Brandon. No. <laughs> Get Bernie's body, use a voodoo ceremony to reanimate him, and bring him back to her so she can, so he can lead her to the money. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I forgot it was the also, like, they could have his corpse lead them to money. What? Yeah. After their release, they find Bernie, who they believe is still dead, stuff him in a suitcase, and bring him with him. To the Virgin Islands. What? What? Wait. To prepare a bathroom. But having lost the sacrificial pigeon, they use a... Sacrificial chicken, they use a pigeon instead. This limits Bernie's ability to walk towards the hidden money. He only moves when he hears music. (laughs) Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I think he found a new movie to watch in quarantine. The, mo- the mobsters in Mobu are arrested, and Bernie is last seen leading Henry and Charles, who have been transformed into goats by voodoo in a carnival parade. That sounds about right. <laughs> what? Yeah, I mean, I'm kind of sad they don't make movies like this anymore. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Well, I, they kind of do, though. It's just they're not well-funded anymore. Yeah. Okay, Um. let's finish reading this, and then I'm going to do one last thing at the end of the, the episode before we, we go off, because I found some things that you need to know about, and I think our listeners need to know about, and we'll do that okay. in a second. But if you enjoy the podcast, be sure to rate, review, subscribe. If you have monster requests or stories, send those in. Uh, We always need them. I'm still working on the Wendigo. Don't worry. It'll eventually happen. Yeah. Um, oh, I chose this one because uh, my other story I was going to do was more less ridiculous and also like f- folklore Native American history-ish. But I figured given with like everyone being trapped at home, I'd give a uh, one I knew would be less serious. Fair enough. So that's, that's, I, I, that's why I opted Wendigo, for Jeff the Talking Mongoose. When Wendigo might be a little while off just because of uh, the fact that it has some ties to pandemics. Oh, of it. and like it's a it's a very nuanced story with a lot of stuff. Yeah, uh, you could find me on Instagram at donkey underscore hands. My website is boyerb.com. My email is brandon at cryptopedcast.com. and my Twitter is at crypto brandon capital C capital B. Uh, I'm on Instagram at mu twenty three seven. My Twitter is at jf dunham. My website is johndunhamgames.com, and my email is john at cryptopediacast.com. Our art was done by Tom Hill. You can find him on Instagram at thomasmichaelhill. His website is greatergloryco.com, and his email is tommikehill at gmail.com. So uh, I'll do the sign-off, and then I'm going to talk to you for a second. Okay. Maybe we'll keep it in the episode. Maybe we won't. Uh, as always, I'm John. I'm Brandon. And things are going to get weird. And they're about to get weirder with what I'm about to send Brandon. Oh, okay. I like. So, I was looking for something to watch during the quarantine. I found that. Um, it's called the Velocipaster. Wait, why? Yeah, it's called the Velocipaster. Um, if you hit watch trailer, it's phenomenal. Uh, can I just read the two sentence primer that? Oh, it, please do. On Amazon. Please. 
Please do. It's, uh, after losing his parents, a priest travels to China where he inherits a mysterious ability that allows him to turn into a dinosaur. At first horrified by this new power, a prostitute convinces him to use it to fight crime and ninjas. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Please, please, let us let us watch this uh, minute and 30 second trailer together. Uh, I was banned from watching oh. this while Lissa was in the house. Oh, I'm sorry. I think I started the move. Wait, let me go back. I, I have Prime, so I think I started it by accident. Yeah. Uh, y- yeah. So, uh, you know, I'm just going to. Uh, if you want to if you want to watch the trailer with us, uh, we're going to do this together. Yeah. Also, I- by the way, I think it's rated X. Oh, I like it even more. All right. All right. Velocipaster trailer. I'm looking up on YouTube. It's a minute and 56 seconds. Okay. Okay. I just clicked play. Oh, I've got a YouTube ad. Uh, 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 uh. Here this we go. Is, this is really. This is why I wanted to end the episode first, because I had the feeling yeah. this was going to happen. He's just attacked by ninjas and happens to know Kung Fu. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's great. He's a pastor. And his wife apparently knows. Oh, that's not his wife. That's the prostitute. (laughs) I think. Wait, is that John Mulaney? I don't know. (gasps) Oh, John. When people tell him bad things in the confession booth... A, v- a velociraptor claw comes out and gets him. It's really good. Oh, I think that one girl was from Thanks Killing. She actually might be. <laughs> Why are they hiking the woods dressed what? like that? That's not proper footwear. Oh, well, no. Because this is basically, they're basically at the Renaissance Fair. Oh, oh, this looks so good. Oh, I've been, but that being said, I have been banned from watching this in the house while listening. Why? Why? Because I understand completely. If you are not in the mood for this, this is a nightmare. I do like the fact that during the ninja fight, there's a woman who pulls off a a pump. (laughs) Oh, I missed that. That was so good. And then it ends with about 20 seconds of just black screen. Yep. Um, There is one other thing. Yes. That I found. Uh, This was released this last year. It is called Killer Sofa. Oh, is it like the, um, the, the gazebo? No. I'm going to read the the description for this one. Okay. When a killer lazy boy chair falls in love with a girl, it's up to a disgraced Jewish rabbi and a couple of brokenhearted detectives to figure out how to stop the bloody carnage that will follow. All right. I'm going to click and watch trailer. Yep. This looks like it's a higher production value. Oh, it's much higher production value, but it's still terrible. I think it's in Australia, too. Yeah. Australia or, like, Kiwis. Yeah. It's a higher (laughs) quality than I think it needs to be. It's higher quality than it deserves to be. Like, it's leaning out the window looking at them. Oh, yes, yes. My favorite part is when it it lifts a body up and pushes it over using the... uh... Oh, the, the kicky footy thing? <laughs> Using the kickstand. Also, they make a reference <gasps> to the gimmick. Oh, yes. That was beautiful. Yes. yes. The My favorite part is, like, they're channeling some of the shining energy in this. Yes. This, oh, there's a magical blue light? I have no idea, Brandon. This is the most bizarre thing. Wait, what the fuck? Was that a demon that came out of the closet? Yes. Yes. (laughs) Oh. (laughs) 
I kind of there's a part of me that almost wants to do us just watching uh terrible movies, but yeah. that's such a played out like thing. Oh yeah, well we could definitely do something where like in quarantine when we have free time, just like watch them, just put the audio together, say when we click play, and then like let people watch at home when they're at home because they might be trapped home alone, so we can just do a, uh, all do... enjoy just a bad like a uh, like a riff tracks, but we didn't pre write jokes or anything. We're just experiencing these movies. A worse riff tracks. Yeah. Um. No. Yeah. I. Oh man, I I want to watch both of them, but I don't know if I they're the kind of movie I don't know if I want to watch alone because I think half the fun is making fun of it. Yeah, that's true. Like like not even gonna lie, that's that's honestly where I'm at. But <laughs> oh, so funny, so funny. Um, anywho, I'm gonna stop recording. All right. <laughs>